a Soyuz space capsule separated from the International Space Station on Monday morning. NASA said the Soyuz is bringing NASA astronaut Tracy C. Dyson and Roscosmos cosmonauts Nikolai Chubb and Oleg Kononenko to Earth. The spacecraft is scheduled for a parachute-assisted landing at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time 12 o'clock GMT on the steppe of Kazakhstan, southeast of the town of Dzeskazgan. Standing by for undocking and there it is. 11, 20, 36, 20, separation is confirmed. Physical separation confirmed. The Soyuz MS-25 is free of its mooring. Please. Uh, Expedition 71 is in the history books. Expedition 72 officially underway. So the interface surface is clean. Copy. Thank you. And we wish you successful landing. Thank you, Alexei, all those guys who are on the station. Thank you so much. And see you on the ground. Expedition 72 Commander Sonny Williams ringing the traditional bell on board the station to herald uh, the departure of the Soyuz MS-25. Russia has threatened a missile strike on Strasbourg if Ukraine is allowed to fire Western weapons at Russian territory. This was stated by the State Duma Speaker Vyacheslav Volodin, commenting on the news that the European Parliament called for lifting restrictions on Ukraine's strikes on Russian territory. If this happens, Russia will give a tough response using more powerful weapons. No one should have any illusions about this. The State Duma insists on this, Volodin said. Moreover, the Russian politician asked two public questions to the MEPs. He wondered whether they had consulted voters before voting on this decision and whether Europeans wanted war to come to their home. Before making such a decision, we should have remembered the lessons of World War II. Then, 27 million Soviet citizens died in the fight against fascism. It was our country that liberated you and all of Europe. The only thing the European Parliament should do after such a statement is to dissolve itself. For reference, the Sarmat missile's flight time to Strasbourg is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, Volodin added. Recall the European Parliament has called on EU member states to lift existing restrictions that prevent Ukraine from using Western weapons systems to destroy legitimate military targets in Russia. According to the EP website, the corresponding resolution was supported by 425 European deputies, 63 abstained and 131 were against. The text of the resolution states that without lifting the current restrictions, Ukraine cannot fully exercise its right to self-defense and remains vulnerable to attacks on its civilian population and infrastructure. The European Parliament stressed that insufficient supplies of ammunition and restrictions on their use create a risk that previous efforts will be nullified. MEPs also expressed regret over the reduction in bilateral military aid to Ukraine from EU countries. MEPs reiterated their call on EU member states to fulfill their commitments made in March 2023 to provide Ukraine with 1 million shells and to speed up the supply of weapons and air defense systems, including German Taurus missiles. In addition, the EP reiterated its position that all EU countries and NATO allies must collectively and individually commit to annually allocating at least 0.25% of their GDP for military support to Ukraine. Ukraine will soon be able to use decommissioned Australian Abrams battle tanks in the war against Russia, according to the Sydney Morning Herald. The newspaper reports that the Australian government, together with the administration of US President Joe Biden, is working on a plan to send American-made Abrams M1A1 tanks to Ukraine. At the same time, Australian Defence Minister Richard Marles says that there are a number of opportunities that they are considering with the Ukrainian government. Sources in the Australian government said that Marles is studying how to ship the tanks in line with US defence export regulations. 
One of the most experienced commanders of the Australian Army, General Peter Lay, supported the idea of transferring decommissioned tanks to Ukraine. I am surprised that these tanks have not yet been offered to Ukraine. Although they are being decommissioned, they are high-quality equipment that has maintenance and spare parts, and the Ukrainians really need them, the general said. The M1A1 Abrams tanks purchased by Australia in 2004 for $550 million have not seen combat and are due to be replaced by newer models. In July, Australia decommissioned 59 of the tanks, raising questions about their fate, storage, disposal or transfer to Ukraine. In addition, the Ukrainian community in Australia expressed outrage that decommissioned military equipment, including patrol cars and inflatable boats, are being sold on online auctions rather than sent to the front. Vasil Maroshnichenko, Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, stressed that tanks were a key element of defense. Our soldiers need them and would be happy to use them if Australia provided them directly or through the US. Defense Secretary Richard Marles, who ruled out sending tanks to Ukraine in February, recently softened his stance, saying, we are in discussions with the Ukrainian government on various options. Government sources also confirmed that Marles is investigating how to ensure the transfer of the tanks complies with US military export regulations.